very well. You're um, a famous guy in this town. <laughs> All right, uh, now we get to throw him out of here. Hi, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, Les. Neil. Yes. I think we ought to change the the helmet. What do you want? What it's do you want to put on? It's kind of difficult though because we're stuck with the name Browns, which is good. Don't right. get me wrong. Right. But at least when you have a name like the 49ers or the Colts, you got something to work with. So what do you want to put on here? I don't know, but you well, mentioned all don't those you look at that? Don't you look at this and say Cleveland Browns? If that's the case, what do you need it for? I can I can look at some helmets and have no clue what they're telling me. Yeah. Right. But you were telling you were mentioning all the the old memories, and I think that's great. But wait, you know wait, what, what, I, did, I what did we Browns? want? What did we want, Neil? When the Browns left, we wanted the name, and we wanted the colors, and we wanted the records. What good are those things but if you're going to slap something that. on a black and teal helmet? But not everyone wanted that. Of course so when they I did. See the Browns well, helmet, every every poll I saw, overwhelmingly, people wanted to be called the Cleveland Browns. They didn't want to start over and be the Cleveland whatever. Okay. Now, you can't. Now, don't, let's not do revisionist history. In 1995, in the beginning of '96, we overwhelmingly wanted the team back, and we wanted them to be called the Browns, even if it was a relocated team. You know that, and I know that. Right. That's a majority. A vast majority. But vast Les, majority. You bring up Marion Motley and all yeah. these old guys, and I think that's great. We should never forget where we came from. Right. But when I see the Browns helmet, I also think. Think of the river on fire, the Huff riot. Why? What's that got to do with it? Screwed up. Screw, I, I, hey, wait a beginning. minute. You're telling me, <coughs> excuse me, I'm all choked up. I show you this and you look at the river on fire? Yeah. You, you know what? You got to see a shrink. 5750403 is our number. How do you look at this? You might look at it and say it's ugly. You might look at it and say it's dull. But you can't look at it and say, hey, there's a river on fire. Or the mayor's hair just caught fire. Well, the mayor's wife has to bowl instead of going to the White House. Excuse me one second. It's driving me to drink. <sighs> Tasty Pizza, a Lynnhurst tradition since 1958, located on Mayfield Road right at Richmond. 449-1252 is the number for a terrific pizza. When I see Tasty Pizza, I don't think of rivers on fire. I think of great tasting pizza. I think of tasty being a noun and an adjective. I think of pasta and salads and sandwiches. <coughs> and I can't talk. There's a storm of ruin on pay-per-view. You will buy your weather for me. Ray Fiennes, Uma Thurman, Sean Connery. This is merely the beginning. When evil reigns, only two agents can weather the storm. Absolutely. Good. Saving the world in style. You'll pay for that. The Avengers on pay-per-view. Thrilling entertainment, easy to order, right at home. Uh, I think until we as Americans get to that point where we can look at the accomplishments and, and, and the downside of, of everybody. I think uh, the country is going to continue to struggle. But uh, I, I, I could not agree more with what I think the meaning of that phrase is. You, you, you have no way of knowing where you're going if you don't know where you've been. You keep your eyes open. They're everywhere. You can never escape them. <laughs> they know where you live. And they're coming to your home on pay-per-view. You've been warned. Half human, half vampire. Wesley Snipes has the power to save the world. Tonight, yes, man comes to an end. I don't see it that way. Play. Hard-hitting action, fast and easy, on pay-per-view. It's not easy being Damon's. You know, the place for ribs. Every time we turn around, we're being challenged. Their ribs against ours. But hey, we're always willing to engage in a little friendly competition because all we have to do to come out on top is follow our recipe. So come on, the next time you're in the mood for award-winning ribs, the first and only place to think of is Damon's, the place for ribs. Well, thank goodness we had that break. I got my voice back after my tirade. Ace American Copy Equipment. The owner, the president, is John Barron. He is the 
the official copier supplier for Jacobs Field and the Cleveland Indians. He wants you to know you can have the best of both worlds. They are the authorized dealers of Rico, the number one digital copier in the country, as well as Hewlett Packard, the most respected name in printers. Terrific place. They are working partners, Rico and Hewlett Packard. Ace Copy can provide you with the most outstanding products, services, and supplies in the market today. Serving all over uh, northeastern Ohio, call 216-642-9555. And Dean's Supply, located at 70th and Euclid, and we have the converting plastic cups. They are the best, the actual best cups on the market, and they're, they're not breakable. I suppose if you smash them up against, uh, you know, with a sledgehammer, you can break them. But if you're having a party, uh, you might want to uh, check out these converting cups from, from uh, Dean's Supply. They're the best. It's among uh, 33,000 items that they have. Uh, on display at all times. You can stop in and mention more sports in Les Levine. You'll get 5% off unless you're purchasing mer uh, machinery. But anything else, it's 5% off. And uh, they accept all credit cards. They've got a supervised parking area. Uh, service is not expensive. It is priceless at Dean's Supply. They've got cleaning supplies, brand names to medium brands and even cheap brands. Over 85,000 square feet of merchandise, over 33,000 items. If you're having a party for a St. Patrick's Day coming up, you'll want to check out Dean Supply at 70th and Euclid. They started in Cleveland in 1950 as the first cash and carry wholesaler in the entire town. 5750403 is our number. I want to give away a gift certificate since we're just giving stuff away to uh, Amazon Trail Seafood and, uh, uh, and Steaks located on Eastland Road, about a uh, half mile from the IX Center. So if I feel like giving you one, I'll do that. Hi, you're on the air. Good evening. Hello. Joe, go ahead. Joe, are you there? Joe, you got three, two, one. No? He's a goner. Joe is a goner. Joe is gone. Well, we feel bad for Joe and our sympathies to his family. He passed on, waiting for us to come to the phone during the break. 5750403. Let's try this one. You're on the air. Good evening. Neil. Hello. Our second Neil. Tonight. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Neil. Uh, no, I'm not. <coughs> this is Joe. Right, Joe, go ahead. Yeah, I didn't die. <laughs> you have to be Neil. It said you were Neil. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the helmet. Uh, I remember seeing a picture of Jim Brown uh, from his rookie season holding a picture of the, of, the foot of the helmet with the name the Browns written on the side of it. Never. The only thing the Browns ever had on a helmet, there were a couple of years in the Jim Brown era where the numbers were on the sides of the helmet. Okay. There, there are pictures of Jim Brown with the 32 on the helmet, but there's never been any insignia on the, on the helmet. There's, but uh, that was just a promo picture? That then? was probably for promotional purposes. The, the Browns, for, for a couple of years, had the, the numbers on the helmet, but that was it. Uh, I, I agree with uh, the other fellow thought the helmets were a little boring. Well, they are boring, but I, that's... that's I, I, I would uh, vote to put the name of the Browns on the side of the helmet. Well, uh, tell me a team that has the name on the side now. The Bengals used to have it on it. On Bengals the did, and the New York Giants did also right. at one time. But, but that's where uh, the Jets, I guess, have it now, but that's the retread uniform from, from the 60s. I, I, I like it just the way it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what the... You know, you talk about Browns fans and Browns tradition. That's part of it. Yeah, they're ugly. You know they're ugly, and I know they're ugly. I'm not saying they're ugly. I well, they're they're dull. But so what? It's just a little bit boring, and it could it could yeah, but you know what? The you team if you, you put take the a look. On it. You take a look at all the other teams in the league right. and how their uniforms have evolved over the years. This is basically the same uniform right. that Marion Motley was wearing in 1946. Right, but it's a new start, and maybe you could do something a little different. Well, maybe, except to uh, you're going to offend an awful lot of old-time Browns fans. You know, we we talk about people who have been Browns fans and ticket holders since 1946. Why would they want a different color and a different name? I and you know, the Browns, we brag about how the Browns are passed on from generation to generation. Well, by God, this is what you're passing on. Well, I've been a fan since 1957, so well, then I would you like to see something done with the helmets, that's all. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you for the call, 575-0403. I don't know, when, we, when it came down, and I was on radio at the time, all we heard was, we want those orange helmets. We want those same plain orange helmets. Hi, you're on the air. Good evening. All right, this is George. I know that. I was talking to a young man out in California. He knows all the team logos for all the teams, and he agrees with me that Brown's helmet is unique, and it should stay that way. Uh, that's my point. It's unique by not, not having a logo. I mean, all you have to do is see this, you just see this, and you know it's Cleveland Browns. You need something here that says Browns? I don't think so. Uh, that's the way I see it, too. Okay. Uh, the whole tradition that the Browns have had, 
is the fact that they had no George, you're absolutely right. Now, this year they might want to put 49ers on it, but that has to do with <laughs> all the people they're bringing in. Do you recall when the Browns first came into being, they used to have a midget lead the whole team out on the field? Yeah, the elf. Yes. Yeah. And uh, there was some, I wear one of those uh, throwback jackets that has the uh, small little brownie on right. it now. Right, right. But you don't want that as your... No, uh, don't want no, anything this is, on a helmet. This is big, tough football. You don't want, Leave you don't want the, uh, the elf. Leave it the way it is. I agree with you, George. Thank, Thank you. Hey, uh, George? Yes. Thanks for the call. Thanks. 575-0403 is our number. Next person who lives on the west side, I'm going to give him that uh, gift certificate. Is that okay? Let's try this. Hi, you're on the air. Good evening. Hi, Les. How are you? Good. Where are you calling from? Lindhurst. Tasty pizza. K yeah, I know. I got, I got Amazon Seafood, Amazon Trail. I, uh, you want to make the, the jaws I'd over there? I'd love to. Pardon? I'd love to have that Very good. Martin, you're a winner. Thank you. All right. We'll, find, All right. we'll get your address somehow. Keep the helmet the same. Yeah. Don't forget the Browns did have cheerleaders back in the late 50s. Yeah, but they won't have them this year. I know, but they always forget that in the plane deal and everybody else. They had them. They, they were, were the brush majorettes. They were the brush high majorettes. They, uh, they absolutely were in 1964. Right. And also, is Bill coming on tomorrow? Yes. Ask him if the Cavs went in a tank last night, including the coach. That was about the worst experience I've ever seen with the Cavs. Why, why, what makes you think they tanked it? Well, they have a 60-point team for two games in a row. They give up 100-plus, which they haven't all year. He keeps the, the center on the bench. The 76ers have no center. The, the, the team played no defense. This is not the Cavaliers. Well, it's all of these teams are going through this. When you're playing, in, the, in their case, every other night right now, and the three and four nights and three and three nights are going to start hopping in on them, there's not every game is, is uh, NBA final. Ca uh, 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 it, it's not as good as you're going to see in the NBA final. Well, I mean, you're going to see bad games, and that was one of them. But the 76ers had the same problem. And well, they uh, all do. That doesn't mean it equals it out. Some, oh. some, some handle it differently than others. Well, we didn't handle it very well. Well, they, the Cavs got the luxury of beating Orlando when Orlando was in the midst of one of those runs. It, that will equal out. Okay, we'll ask Bill tomorrow. What do you want me to ask him? If they went in the tank. They didn't go in the tank. They played a bad game. That doesn't mean they went in the tank. Okay. That's what you're going to have when you, with this truncated, that's our new word of the day, truncated. <laughs> With our truncated schedule, that's what you're going to see. Well, it's part of the game. Okay. Okay, thanks. I mean, right about now, they would be starting the season with the amount of games they've played. Would be uh, normally they played nine or ten exhibition games. So what if they played nine regular games and two exhibition games? Right now, they'd be starting the season. Hi, you're on the air. Good evening. Hi, Les. How are you doing? I'm well, George. How are you? Great. I am from the west side. Too course. late, George from uh, Martin from Linhurst beat you. He just moved to the west side. Oh, right. Um, this argument with the Browns helmet thing has been going on for a year, and I guess it's part of the tradition of there's one group of people who want an insignia. Yeah, but George, it was it was overwhelmingly they've done polls on this over far and away overwhelming that that they wanted to keep it. Oh, I'm I'm glad for that because I like it the way it is. My problem is that people continue that they don't know what what this is. To me, the Cleveland Browns did not have a team for three years. That was part of the agreement. Right. The city of Cleveland kept the franchise. The only thing that was lost was a team, a group of players. Right. Just like Robbie Alomar left Baltimore to come here, a group of players, a team, moved to Baltimore. Well, and, and the reality is, if, if the Cleveland organization stayed together from 95 till now, how many of those guys would be coming back anyway by, by 1999? The answer is one or two. Exactly. And that's my point that, you know, everybody keeps, and, you know, I see in the paper, the new Browns, the new Browns this, new Browns that. Right. It's not the new Browns. Well, the Cleveland Browns. It'll be called the Cleveland Browns, but the new Browns just means the new organization. That's right. Well. A new organization. Just yeah. like you had new ownership with the Cleveland Indians. Right. You have new organization with the Browns. That's right. With yeah. a three-year hiatus, which is really unprecedented. Uh, exactly. I mean, you look at 79. Let's take 1979 and 1995. Right. Both teams were called the Cleveland Browns, but you had two different rosters. Well, of course. Right? Yeah. So it's the same thing. Well, they're just throwing the word new in there temporarily because of the three-year hi hiatus. Once they take the field in August of this year, it's the Cleveland Browns. One last question I want to ask you is this whole stadium deal. I think Mr. Lerner is getting a raw deal. I think they should have had his input from the beginning to get the stadium done. I he mean, he wasn't a candidate to own the team at the time. Well, that should have been – that's – 
well, my question to you, shouldn't the owner been immediately assigned before they build the stadium? Uh, of course, except for a couple of things. Number uh, one, they needed that stadium in place to be ready for 99 in case, instead of an expansion team would be coming, in case Minnesota or New England or Oakland or I whoever. I that, that, that I mean, that's, it's the NFL's g toy. They can do I whatever mean, they want with it. Uh, Ohio Stadium for a year or two. I mean, I just don't understand. No, this. they wanted it ready in Cleveland in case the New England Patriots or somebody like that was coming here. My problem is you got a stadium with 10,000 less seats. Well, I understand that, but but you got to understand what they do. They deal in franchise shifting and stadium building. So if they cared about the franchise, they would have uh, they would have had an owner within the first year. But they had to get that stadium under underway. And, and then bring the owner in. That worked to their advantage. Is it, was it to the advantage of Al Lerner? Absolutely not. Yeah. But don't feel sorry for him. He's still got all those dates that he could use at exactly, the stadium. Exactly, but you're still not, look at all the luxury boxes. I understand that, George, but the problem is that, that he, you know, they had to play by the rules of the NFL. Was it unfair to him? If it was that unfair, all of the potential owners would have forced it earlier, and they never were able to do that. Sokolowski's University Inn. A terrific place to go for lunch. And of course, on Fridays uh, during Lent, it's a fish fry going on, and uh, it's the best in town. It's Sokolowski's University Inn. And if you want to have some off, uh, uh, off campus, no, not off campus, off premises uh, catering, the guys at University Inn can take care of it. First exit out of downtown Cleveland off uh, I 71. Swing under the bridge there, you'll find Sokolowski's University Inn now in their 76th year of operation. We'll come on back in a moment. You're watching more sports and less Levine. A swashbuckling swordsman returns, and the legend is reborn on pay-per-view. Zorro. Zorro. Antonio Banderas, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Anthony Hopkins. Danger. You that? Mystery. No bad at all. Romance. Last one. Yes, last one. And lots of sizzle. The Mask of Zorro. You know Zorro. He could be anywhere. Easy to order at home. Pay-per-view delivers epic adventure everyone can enjoy. Monday's FX presents a variety show of a completely different variety. Tennis Teller's Sin City Spectacular. It's a bucket full of rats. <laughs> Big names. Oh, baby. Rockin' music. Here's John Popper. Freaky ass. John dead. Got our own brand of evil magic. Is this your car? And if we're lucky tonight, no one gets hurt. Penn and Teller's Sin City Spectacular. Mondays at 9, 8 central, only on FX. Huh. You're being held up. George Clooney is on the run. Have a nice day. Jennifer Lopez is on his trail. I'm a federal officer. But who's chasing who now? You want to sit down and have cocktails with a woman who tried to shoot you? Whoops. Pay-per-view delivers a double-dealing crime caper. Oh, my God, I can't believe this. They're going to set us up. I get that feeling. From the creators of Get Shorty, out of sight. See it fast and easy at home on Pay-per-view. Hey, fellas, the Circus and the Side Show proudly presents the best of what show bars are all about. Voted Ohio's very finest adult-orientated club some 18 years running. Bachelor parties, blow-off work parties, win fabulous prizes, playing all sorts of Cleveland trivia. Call me. They call me Door George for reservations, and I'll book your reservation absolutely free. We are Cleveland's only, that's right, the only complete adult entertainment complex. You got to know the Circus and the Sideshow here in Cleveland, Ohio. Tomorrow night, we'll go up and down the dial with Bill Needle from 6 until 7. Our show can be seen every night, Monday through Friday, from 6 till 7, here on Channel 24 in the, in the, in the uh, suburbs and Channel 45 in the city on Cablevision. And, of course, at selected times throughout the week on Fox Sports Ohio. It's also replayed at 1 o'clock in the morning here on Cablevision. The communication industry is changing rapidly. You've got a lot of choices and a lot of decisions for you and your company, so you ought to contact Don DiGeronimo and his professional staff at Independence Communications. They have the understanding of the needs of all of their clients. They're an authorized Motorola two-way radio dealer and Northeast Ohio's premier provider of portable and mobile two-way radios. For confidence in wireless, call 1-800-524-MOTO. Let's go to the phones. A couple of more minutes to go. You're on the air. Good evening. Hey, Les. I have a... Uh how you doing? Are you really Neil from University Heights? Yeah. Okay, because you're the fourth person we've called that. 
Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, uh, I have a question, but before I get to it, how do you feel about, uh, I don't know if you have a daughter or a niece, how do you feel about promoting those organizations that have women flaunt their, their uh, womanhood around for slimy men? How do you feel about that? How do I feel about it? Yeah. Um, well, this is, uh, you know, we're aimed at uh, males 25 to 54. Uh, they, uh, they want Would you want your daughter doing that? What, what does that have to do with my daughter doing that? They're purchasing advertising. I can't stop it. If I, if I have a show here and a political candidate wants to, to run commercials and uh, uh, I don't Would believe in anything. Would you compare to that? Well, you want to listen? We're in America, okay? All right. If somebody hey, wants, the question. If, if somebody wants to promote a candidate and I don't like it, I don't have the right to, to keep them off. I have a right whether I endorse them live or not. Okay, but if they want to purchase advertising, I can't stop them. I can stop if they want me to do the commercial if I feel if I don't want to do it. But hey, this is America. Hi, you're on the air. Good evening. Herb, go ahead. Hi, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, I have on the uh, helmet. Yeah. I have a few ideas that I'd like to get over to. Do it. How about a broken heart? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Call themselves the new heartbreakers. Okay. <laughs> or. You, you mean sense? you have a, a symbol for the cardiac kids, but it's broken. Right, right, right. right. Okay. okay. Or we can go with uh How about a, a fumble? Hey, you know, Metcalf up the middle. <laughs> anyway, how about a stencil of a brain on the side? You know how about what? A stencil of a brain. Yeah. You know, this way when they put their helmets on, they can scare the other team. Because the they thing. think they're too smart? Right, right, right. Or how about the words, no dome needed? <laughs> okay, okay, you know, that, that, that'll yeah, scare Yeah, cold out here, isn't it? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. how about this space for rent? Al Lerner can try to make back some of that money <laughs> that he spent, you know, on this team. Or how about, plain and simply, owned by Al? How, how about that? Uh, I'll, I'll submit it to him at the next meeting. <laughs> now, uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, as you can tell. Uh, because you said Stiller. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how about Mira? You a fan of Stiller and Mira? Well, no, no, just the Stillers. Just the Stillers. Just the Stillers. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I'm happy that Cleveland finally got their team back, you know, that uh, everybody's kind of pumped up. I'm sure that Al's going to make his money back. You know, he's going to probably double it in the first yeah, day. Yeah, don't worry about Al Lerner. Don't, <laughs> don't worry about Al Lerner. He'll yeah, be okay. fine. <laughs> Thanks, Herb. Okay. There you go. We made it through. Got a lot of phone calls. I knew we would because Wayne is directing out here tonight. Excellent, excellent. Door George was here. We had gift certificates from the Amazon Trail. Did gift certificates from the East Bank and the Flats. Pretty good night. You know, we were supposed to have Monica Lewinsky here, but, you know, Neil from University Heights wouldn't allow us to have her on. Right? Uh, what a coincidence. His name is Neil. We'll see you tomorrow. Bill Needle will be, Bill Needle will be here tomorrow. Hal Levin on Thursday. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.